two, one. Good afternoon, Ross Common County, and welcome to our cooking class. This is our fourth class that we've held here at the Serenity Day Lodge. So with that being said, today we're cooking with Sheila. Welcome, Sheila. Thank you. So today, as we were describing, we are going to process the pumpkins to make our own homemade pumpkin pie. Um, little known fact to a lot of people is when you buy a frozen pie out of the store, it is not pumpkin. It is technically winter squash, and you can look the ingredients on the back of the container. Um, so first, you would have to wash your pumpkin, obviously. This is considered a pie pumpkin. One of these will do about a pie to a pie and a half, depending on size. You are not stuck with a pie pumpkin. Um, you can make pumpkin pie out of jack-o'-lanterns. Um, you can do it out of pretty much any size pumpkin. The difference is, is a pie pumpkin is thick and meatier and your jack-o'-lanterns are thinner for carving. So you're gonna want a sturdy knife, a spoon for scraping it out, and a measuring cup, cup for water, cutting board obviously, um, I opted to use something that most people have in their home because you don't want to go and buy a bunch of new stuff just to make a pumpkin pie. So most people tend to have a blender. You can use a hand mixer, you can use a stand mixer, and you actually can use a fork. <laughs> so um, any way we got to do it, you can get it done. So first, I actually cut straight in to the center and pull it down. Remember, always cut away from you. I'm sure you've all heard that a hundred times. I cut right through the stem and it opens up like that. And then get your spoon and clean out all your pumpkin seeds. You can keep these and make pump homemade pumpkin seeds if you want. There's tons of recipes for those sweet, salty, spicy. You want to make sure you clean it out really good. You don't want any of the stringy stuff left in there. Is that a technical term? A stringy, stringy stuff? stuff? No, it's not a technical term, but it's a better term to use. It's pumpkin guts, basically. Um, with that being in there, what will happen is it will cause your pumpkin to actually be stringy. A little bit won't hurt for texture purposes, but you don't want a lot of it. So what we're doing today is making the puree because in November on Tuesday the 24th, I'm actually gonna show you how to make the actual pumpkin pie from scratch and not somebody else's recipe. I made nine pies to create my own. Then we're going to need our tray. How do you need a tray? A cookie sheet for baking. Oh, I thought you meant like you're going to need nope. it like dough. Nope. Cut the ends off. You don't want to cook the stem. So it's kind of shaped like that. You want to cut it into two inch sections. Not perfect, doesn't matter. About that size. Pumpkin takes a while to cook. So the smaller the section, generally the faster the cooking, but you don't want to handle a hundred little tiny pieces either. How come you started doing your pumpkins from scratch? Um, or who showed you? My family has done things more old fashioned way for years. So I was taught how to do pumpkins. I was taught how to can. Um, I know how to ferment um, sauerkraut. 
Um, and who taught you how to do that? One of our seniors taught me how to <laughs> ferment sauerkraut. Um, really nice old guy. Big credit to him. Um, unfortunately, can't say his name, but he'll know who he is. And he's been doing it for years himself. This one's being temperamental. So I'm just gonna cut the top off it. I do have some that we uh, I pre-put into the oven. So that way I can show you how to process the end part of it. So that is baking. Funny joke for you is, what do you get when you divide the circumference of a pumpkin by its diameter? That answer is actually pumpkin pie. <laughs> I don't get it. You don't get it. The circumference of a circle divided by its diameter equals pie. Oh, I thought you said pumpkin pie. It does, because we did it by a pumpkin. Not that, a circle. That was Debbie <laughs> and well. You know, same thing. too funny. So, um, you will need for making your pie next time we get together is flour, nutmeg, um, cinnamon, clove egg, pumpkin puree, and one can of evaporated milk to kind of get you started. That's for the pie portion of it, not for- If your milk is evaporated, then how can you use it? <laughs> it's also considered a pet milk in the old days. Um, so basically, Besides that, you could use a store-bought pie shell if you wanted to, or you can make your own. Um, pie shells can be fairly easy to make as long as you find an easy recipe. Hopefully our pumpkin's done here shortly. So after we get this cooked, we're going to scrape it off its rind, and then we're going to put the pieces into the blender and mix it so that way it comes out smooth. We'll then measure it out into freezer bags. Um, another little known fact is pumpkins and squashes cannot be canned. They're not stable in acid levels from one to the next, so you can't promise that it's not going to be a botched canning. So to keep people from getting sick, you should always freeze it. Um, I freeze mine in the portions I need for what I'm making. So for pumpkin pies, two cups. You can make pumpkin donuts, which only requires one cup. Um, if you don't want a whole pumpkin pie, you can use um, a cupcake pan and make several pumpkin pies. You can use just like you would a pie tin. It's gonna be a little bit fuller, more like a tart size. Um, but that comes out really good for freezing and saving for later. So the oven that we have is actually set on 400 and you're going to want to cook it for roughly about a full tray, probably more like 45 minutes to an hour. When you get the tray in the oven, you need to fill the bottom of the tray with water. That way the rinds don't burn in the oven. 
So how to tell if your pumpkin is ready for pureeing. Um, these are a little hot, but if you put your fork in it, you should be able to twist it and it should be able to build up. So the easiest way to you show you that again, just be safe. If you put your fork in it, your fork tongue should go in very easily and you should be able to twist it inside. And that's basically how you find out if your pumpkin's ready. So the easiest way is to take a butter knife and actually cut down on it into pieces. And they're gonna be hot, but you're gonna tear them off. Right off your pumpkin rind. Or you can take a knife and have a knife help you, whatever's easiest, because I know these will be hot, especially if it just came out. Got these cute little hunks. Do you need help, ma'am? No, thank you. Okay. I was gonna offer Debbie. You were gonna offer Debbie. Um, so if it's too hot, just use a fork, use a knife and kind of just peel it off. No big deal. Might take a little bit just to get it through. Uh, remember when you do get this done and it's put in the bags that the bags are vented until it cools. You don't wanna get any weird moisture in the bag. What do you mean by vented? Is Where it just Open in the center just a little bit so that way it can cool off to its temperature before it gets into the freezer. But yep, you just kind of just keep working at it and putting it in. Like I said, too hot, just use a knife and a fork. It should peel off pretty easy, um, kind of like butternut squash or any of your other squashes, if you've had those. Once they cool down a little bit, it'll be a little bit easier to touch them. Um, real pumpkin pie is really meaty versus what you get in the store where it's a little more gel. Uh, they have a lot of texture to them. Just depending on the person, not everybody likes clove. So if you don't care for clove, you can omit that. You don't have to have that in there. Keep on going. So get it all out of there and into here. This one should probably do one pumpkin. It may do a little over, but probably get our two cups that we need for our pumpkin next time. Doing pumpkin is very messy. worth it in the end. Okay, so I've got all my pumpkin all cleaned out. No rinds in the pumpkin, just the meat. So we're gonna put the lid on here. And you can start out on low if you want to, um, to get some of the juices going. If it's not fully going, you can add water. Water comes out when it's frozen, you're going to have lots of water in it when it comes out frozen. So if you need a little bit of liquid just to get it moving, it won't hurt it. Yeah, it kind of stopped because it lost the fluid. 
So would prune juice help get it moving a little better? No, you wouldn't want prune juice in your in your uh, pumpkin because you don't want a pumpkin and prune pie. <laughs> Sometimes it, it gets caught or something. I generally use a stand mixer because I have one, but you can use pretty much anything. Like I said, even right down to mashing with a fork. So it kind of figures out. You're going to have little chunks that's about normal because it doesn't all cook completely the same. But for the most part, pretty. Yeah, pumpkin's really dense, and that's why I said you can really and truly put water in it to help it because it is super dense when it comes out. Um, and the water's not going to hurt because there's going to be a little bit of juice and water in the bottom. And like I said, if there's hard parts, that's okay to have them there. If you want them gone, you can smush them um, with a fork because they're easy to smush. So what we need to do is we need to put them in a freezer bag so we can store it for our pie next month. Ziploc, perfectly fine. Um, I'm going to get this out of the way because we want to do two cups. So this is kind of helpful that I can pour it. And remembering that when you do two cups, you don't want to pat anything down when you're baking. Everything is supposed to be level, but not smooshed. And it looks like this one may have only been a cup and a half of pie. And basically, now it will be okay because you're freezing to put two pumpkins together, but you can't do it if you're canning. If you're canning, it has to be one thing, um, which can have issues if you're canning because if you don't have enough to can a jar, then you've lost it there. A lot of pumpkin down in there. I'm just trying to get as much out as you can. If you happen to um, make too much pumpkin, you can always make all kinds of things with it. You can make pumpkin rolls. Hook here. This hook's got a lot on it. I'll show you. It's got a lot of pumpkin in there. Um, but other than that, you just want two cups in the bag. And that is how you make pumpkin puree. You freeze it, pull it out the night before, and it's ready to go. Now, to make your pumpkin pie, do you have to do it in two steps like we are? No. Or can you do it the same day? You can do it the same day. A lot of times I do make a pie the same day I'm doing puree. Um, it doesn't matter whether the pumpkin's hot or cold when you go to make the pie. Um, it basically, once it's done, it's ready to use. The only difference is, is if you freeze it, you need to pull it out the night before because it has to completely thaw all the way through. Otherwise, you'll get a runny pie. And how long should you leave the pumpkin puree, puree vented? Until it is about room temperature. Once it hits room temperature and it's not, 
it's not all steamed, then it's usually pretty safe to put into the fridge. If you can't temp it, that would be the best way to know is you don't want all the steam left in there. What I do to get rid of air is I actually push mine down into the bottom to kind of go like that. And then when I, to help with storage, I make sure to get all the air out of it because it allows it to last in your freezer longer. I have never had pumpkin in my freezer longer than eight months. Um, that's not because you can't store it longer. That's because they, I've always made so many pies. No, you could use a food sealer Absolutely. to suck all the air out. And it would make it last even longer because there's no air or spoilage. So, but yeah, there's your pumpkin puree. This is a cup. We have to get some more out of what we put in the oven because we got about a half a cup here. Um, thank you for joining me. And what I meant about the venting is just leaving the center. You know, it doesn't have to be the whole thing, just the center. Um, we'll see you in November on the 24th. It's a Tuesday right before Thanksgiving. So that way, if you wanna join me and make a pie for your family Thanksgiving, we will go by it step by step. All right. Thank you, Sheila. And I hope y'all enjoyed this cooking with Sheila class. I learned a few new things. Go figure. <laughs> I'm still working on the pie. And they so, say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Pattett. And again, we'll see you next month. Thank you. Bye-bye.